In this video, we're going to cover how many 12 by 12 tiles it takes to cover 100 square feet. Find out how many coming up next. What's going on guys? Kendall here for Reynolds for Pros and Joes, helping you simplify the renovation and remodeling process. On this channel, we do hands-on product tool and gear reviews, as well as renovation tip and strategy videos like this one. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Today, we're gonna to be answering the question, how many 12 by 12 tiles does it take to cover 100 square feet? Now, this sounds like a relatively straightforward question, but let's dig a little bit deeper into it. And we'll start by actually talking about what does 12 by 12 mean? 12 by 12 is referring to the number of inches that make up the height and width of the tile. So this is a 12 by 12 tile, and I've got my tape measure here, and I can show you that if we put our tape on here, you can see that the tile is 12, 12 inches wide by 12 inches tall, okay? And the true dimensions of this particular tile is actually 11 and three quarters because it's leaving you a quarter inch to account for your grout lines on either side. So now that we've determined that this tile is 12 inches by 12 inches, that means that it's equal to one square foot, right? And so we're calculating for a hundred square feet. So the math is pretty simple. One times a hundred equals a hundred square feet, right? But not so fast. There's some other things we have to consider when we're doing our calculation and that is going to be waste. So there's several different reasons why we have to account for waste. One of which is that sometimes when we're doing a tile installation, you're going to have to cut tiles to make them fit into a particular space. So in the tub shower surround behind me, you can see that here in the corners, we have some pieces that have been cut in half or almost into a third here along the, the corners. And you can see that on both sides here. So in order to do that, you have to run the tiles through a tile saw or some type of tile breaker. And when you do this, you always run the risk of breaking or chipping a tile, which would basically make the tile useless if it breaks the wrong way. So you have to account for that. Another reason why we include for waste is because we can have variation in our tiles. It's not uncommon to find variations in color, variations in finish, and variations in size. And so what you're trying to avoid is getting your tiles and materials on the job site and getting ready to perform your job and realizing that you don't have enough tile to complete the project and having to go back to the store or order more tiles depending on where you got your materials from. Additionally, the variation in tile colors can be different from one lot of tile to another. And this is going to be something that you want to avoid. And this is one reason why you want to also try to buy all of your tile from the same place. Some types of tile are going to be labeled on the boxes is going to indicate that they're from the same dye lot. This is going to be the ideal scenario that you want to buy from. You want to make sure that your numbers and SKUs match on each box of tile. Now, if you're buying odds and ends and you're trying to uh, make a job work with pieces from here and there and half boxes and loose pieces and things like that. You just want to be very careful when you do that and you're going to want to lay out all your tiles before you start installing them to make sure that you're not going to have any issues or if you have issues that you can kind of plan around them and work through them based on the tiles that you have available to you. The next reason that we want to account for waste is very straightforward. When you pick up your materials or they come shipped to you, you don't know how they've been handled prior to being turned over into your possession. So it's very common to open up a box and find one or two broken tiles. So for the same reason that we mentioned before, we don't want to have to turn around and order more tiles in order to be able to complete our job. So when we have overage, that gives us a little bit more cushion and buffer to ensure that we have at a minimum enough tiles on the site to complete the job. So back to what we were saying about 12 by 12 with our 100 square feet. So we said that we're going to have 100 tiles and most commonly the overage or waste factor is 15%. So if we've got 100 square feet of tile, we're going to multiply that by 15% and that's going to give us an additional 15 square feet of tile. And because our tiles are 12 by 12, that means we're going to have 15 additional tiles, bringing our total to 115. Now, in some circumstances, you're going to want to have more than 15% waste. If you know that you're going to have a lot of cuts, like for example, if you're going to be doing a diagonal pattern or something like that, where you know that you're going to have to be making a lot more intricate cuts, or if you're working with a stone or a natural product that 
clearly has a lot more variation than you would expect to find in a standard tile, then you also wanted to increase that number to account for that. But these are just some of the reasons why we want to include for waste. And so the quick answer to our question is 115. 115 square feet of tile ends up being 115 tiles. Okay, that concludes the points that I wanted to make today regarding calculating 12 by 12 tiles. Hopefully you found this video informative. For additional information and tips, I've also written a blog post on the same topic. The link will be in the description box below. And if you happen to be planning a bathroom remodel or addition, also be on the lookout for the bathroom design and planning ebook. The link will be in the description box when it's available. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.